<clears throat> hey there guys, it's Digital Szechuan, and uh, welcome to another Ranting Ramblings. I'm in my nice comfy robe. I don't really care what I look like right now, because I'm quite tired. I had to wake up pretty early, and uh, it's, it's also a great time to do a Ranting Ramblings, because when I get tired, when my mind makes no sense whatsoever, I like to talk a lot, and I like to make a very little sense which you're probably going to figure out. Um, so basically, if you can't figure out what I'm talking about, I'm probably not even going to be able to figure out what I'm talking about after I watch this video. Um, but if you can figure out everything, if you can understand all the craziness that's going on in my words and mouths and, and the stuff that comes out of it, we're probably on the same sort of wavelengths, and we should probably be friends or something like that. So if you can figure it out, let me know. Um, but basically, like this other suggest down below, uh, we're going to be talking about Kickstarter campaigns. There is a reason behind doing this, I guess, right now. I, I, like I, I have made quite a number of Kickstarter videos and posts and stuff like that if you follow any of that type of stuff, which uh, if you want to, I have a Facebook and a Twitter and uh, Google+. Plus. I don't really use that, but that's there as well. So if you want to check out those social media stuff, that that'd be nice. Um, go like go like and follow and, and whatever. Shameless plugs. Anyways, um, but basically the big thing that I want to get at right now is I guess to begin with, uh, it's probably pretty evident, um, especially if you do follow whatever I do. Is um, hopefully you don't actually follow me around, but if you do, that's I guess flattering. Uh, um, but basically, yeah, so Kickstarters, I am a big fan of it. I have backed probably well over a hundred campaigns, both on Indiegogo and. Uh, Kickstarter collectively, so like quite a number of them, um, and so I do enjoy it, so, or else I wouldn't be throwing money at my screen and hoping things will happen, um, and so basically, I guess the whole point I want to make, I guess the first thing, nice little fun fact history lesson type thing, the very first thing I backed, which was about a couple years ago, was a game called uh, Bloom Memories, so it's a, a little indie game. I was very drawn to the art style of the game. I really didn't even really read much into it. I was like, ooh, this looks pretty. And then I was like, pledge. Um, so it still hasn't even come out yet because um, it it's, uh, was you know still developing. It's still developing now, so hopefully it'll come out this year because there is an estimated 2015. But um, yeah, so that was the first thing I ever backed. Most of the stuff that I tend to back is comics and games. They make up about 80-90% of all the things I back. Um, because I thoroughly enjoy indie games and indie comics. I liked it before I started backing stuff on Kickstarter, but it's a great place to find stuff, especially on the comic side of things. Um, I guess one of the rules that I generally do, which has changed over time, um, like, the whole point of Kickstarter, in my mind anyways, is, you know, here's a person, let's say it's me, I have an idea, uh, and I want to make it real. That's basically, it's nice, like, nice and simple, it's like, I want to make this thing a reality. Which is a nice heartwarming thing, like I've definitely seen some really awesome stuff there. Um, but it has changed quite a bit over time, especially as it grew popularity. But um, when I first started out, like the big stories that generally, you know, you read about beforehand, like for me anyways, was like something like Pebble or, or like the Ouya or something like that, like those big technological um, campaigns or even like the Return of Veronica Mars. For example, like a big thing that's coming back, or just a big technological leap. Those things are generally what you'd find, or even like I remember like the Spike Lee or Zach Braff um, movies that came out from Kickstarter as well, which uh, those types of things. The other thing too is it caused a lot of controversy on the Kickstarter platform. Is just like you have this person, it's fa he's famous, and they have tons of money. Why do they need to ask people for more money? Um, Especially on a platform where it started off as very like singular, like here's a person, just just this individual that is just like I want to make this thing, this small little dealio, or like I want to make a little comic book, or you know I want to make whatever. Like it's it's started off very small, it's grown to something huge, as we've seen like million dollar projects, and more recently, which is probably one of the reasons why I am doing this video, is uh you know Pebble, one of the big success stories that has come out of Kickstarter. They're out in markets everywhere now as well, so you can buy them in stores or you know even online and stuff like that. So they've made tons of money. Their Kickstarter campaign for Pebble Time just finished up, and they made even more money. It's the number one Kickstarter campaign ever right now, anyways, um, for the time being. So it's probably going to be wild until something dethrones it. But yeah, twenty million dollars—that's a lot of money. Tons of people backed it, but the thing is, they even got more you know flack because it's like they're an established company now when they weren't before, and it's just like. Um, and the other thing too, for me anyways, is just the fact that Pebble Steel, like their second iteration, didn't need any kind of crowdfunding campaign, but they decided to do it for this one in particular. Um, and then they, they made updates that, you know, I, I actually backed it, but then at the same time I last minute backed out. Um, 
because of I guess I'll mention my rule in a second. Um, but um, basically, yeah, it's just I backed out last minute. I think in the last twenty minutes before the campaign ended, um, and it's just. I don't know. Like, there's there's a th thin line. I like seeing these big campaigns and, like, these big things. Like, for example, like, uh, Nathan Fillion and Alan Tudyk is on uh, Indiegogo right now for their con man thing. And even, for example, the Veronica Mars return. Like, if you see any of those things, or even actually one thing, I guess, the other thing that's out right now as well is Super Troopers 2. I really enjoyed the first one. It's a dumb, stupid, fun movie. But, um, but it's, you know, it's there. there's things that are coming back that are cult classics, and then people will, you know, they want to, the people have been asking for this type of stuff for, for years and years and years. And, like, as an example, if Firefly ever made a campaign, which I guess Con Man is kind of basically a successor of sorts, or at least impartial bits, because they make lots of fun behind the scenes on that. But basically, you know, if they have something that's big and they want it to come back, like, at the same time, you have to think, do they... Those types of things, like, I get at, at, in some form because, you know, networks and stuff like that, they won't take it. Um, but at the same time, something like, you know, the Zach Braff movie or Spike Lee, like, they've got lots of money. Even Shaq Fu, for example, uh, Shaq's got tons of money, and he could have probably funded his own game, which he did put quite a bit of money into, which I read about. So, it's you know, it's not like it's not like he could do it all by himself. He probably could, but it probably would be, eh. It, it might already be eh anyways, but who knows? We'll see when it comes out. Um, but basically, yeah, it's just, I have a thin line between these big people and at the same time, like, these independent people. And one of the things is, I find, it's it goes into the mentality of the bigger they are, the har harder they'll fall. Because there's a lot more hate stuff on the bigger campaigns, which, when I was reading, especially on the Pebble um, thing, just leading up more recently anyways, there's been tons of, tons of just angry-ish posts about, about Pebble and stuff like that. Um, because there's so much more people on those on those comments section compared to like you know like a small little campaign that's raising like yeah you know, it's a thousand dollars to make to make this whatever, um, so it just seems like there's uh, especially I think on the other side too like a communication standpoint you definitely have somebody dedicated to like communicating with the community because there's just too many people commenting and asking questions and stuff like that that you have to get to but like comparatively. I find, like, especially on the updates side of things, especially post-campaign, sometimes I feel like it, it's hit and miss on both sides. I've seen it, like, for example, like, smaller campaigns, I've seen, like, you know, people making the monthly updates every month after after campaign is done, which is fine. I don't mind that. I like a monthly update. But there's sometimes, too, that people will just be, like, they're too busy because there's only the one person. They're working on the thing, but at the same time, it's been months and months and months before they even, like, just... I can't see why you can't just take, like, you know, 10 minutes at a time, just be like, this is what's up. Um, but... On the bigger side of the thing, I've seen some huge campaigns that have just been like completely silent, and it's just like you're, you made tons of money, and you can't even tell us what's going down. Like, what's what's up with that? And you have, I'm sure you have somebody that's dedicated to talking to us as a community. So I don't know. There's just there's just some there's definitely a higher standard on on bigger campaigns because they have raised so much more money because they are generally you know famous or they have been an established company of some sort. So it's just, I don't even understand sometimes. Just, I don't know. The other th side of things, which I can't remember if I even mentioned already, but just um, delays. De delays are always a big part of Kickstarter campaigns. I've only seen a few, I've only experienced a few that have been actually on time. Um, generally with digital stuff, like especially if I'm backing like a comic, like generally I'll, it depends on shipping costs, but I'll usually go with digital if it's an insane shipping cost here, um, which a lot of them are, to be honest. But um, like I've seen quite a number of them that have been on time. One of the first campaigns I ever backed was a comic called The Locksmith, and that I'm pretty I remember being very closely on time. I think it was only like a week or two after their date or whatever. So that was very nice. And again, on the comic side of things, if they stay on schedule, the digital release, usually on, on time. Usually. Um, the other side of things, though, like video games, I back a lot of video games. Those I will never ever expect to be on time. Those things will always go through some sort of development hell of some sort. I just can't expect them because I, I know on the gaming side of things, like I, I'm not, uh, obviously I'm not a developer by any means, but just, I, I've read into it, it's just, you know, there's just always stuff that goes wrong, you always want to polish it up, and it's just, I will never ever expect a video game to be on time. The other thing too, that has come up quite a bit lately, um, is like frauds, um, and just missed opportunities, I guess. Just um, as an example... There's been, especially on the technology side of things, there's one campaign that I backed recently that's kind of on the fringe of being, I guess, 
done for because it kind of lost quite a bit of money, I guess. Uh, I'm not going to mention which one in particular, but basically just they they lost a bunch of money. They're looking for new investors now, and they're, it looks like they're trying to, uh, I guess, yeah, find somebody outside to get a stock. So they, they're selling off part of the company, but they're getting funded. It's kind of like Dragon's Den, I guess, of sorts, or Shark Tank or whatever. Um, so they're... But at the same time, too, like, where did all this money go? You, you made well over your goal. Um, and it's just those types of things happen. But at the same time, I, I sometimes I just wonder how exactly you could have spent this much money. Like, you overshot your budget or something like that. Like, as another big example, this is probably the big, big example of a failed campaign, the Yogcast Adventure game. Uh, they raised, I'm pretty sure, well over a million dollars. And they lost it all, basically. And I remember reading on that, I'm like, how does this happen? They created something, and they tried to reimburse people by giving out another game. Um, but they swapped developers, and, like, just tons of personal shit happened. And just, at the same time, too, like, you made this much money, and you can't do it. And it's just, how did you lose all this money? And I'm pretty sure they, they could only refund, like, certain people after, like, a certain amount of time or something like that. And it's just, it's just ridiculous to read about. Um, so... The other side of things too, like I've seen, especially on Indiegogo, they don't have a, as strict a policy. Now, Kickstarter is not really super strict to begin with, like they're decent as far as catching frauds and stuff like that, but at the same time, just Indiegogo has less of a stringent policy as far as, uh, as long as you can kind of more or less show something, they're not going to pull you down. So there's been tons of frauds and stuff like that that I've read or just like things that are just like... You know, they just did not work the way it was. Uh, like, one campaign I guess I'll mention would be, uh, you know, the ring. Um, there was a ring thing on uh, Kickstarter that basically you could draw out to uh, to do different gestures to control your phone, more or less. So you can text people by saying, like, writing out the word hi with your finger, which seems really weird at, now that I think about it. And it was super, super big. And apparently when it, it did get released, it, it wasn't a fraud by any means, but it sucked, apparently. From reading a bunch of reviews and stuff like that, it just did not work, like almost 80% of the time from a lot of people testing it out. So that seems just like, especially on the technology side of things, I really want to back things that are technological based because I am a gadget fiend of sorts. Like I love electronics and stuff like that. I backed only a few of them. Like for example, I'm still waiting on the Dash earphones, which still look really great. It looks like it's going to be, you know, fine um, from from the updates and stuff. So I'm, I'm not really worried about that one, but they're, the one that I mentioned, um, that I backed that's having some troubles like I've seen that a lot a lot on a lot of uh, technolo technology side of things so I'm just very wary about those so I would say be very very wary when you're backing stuff like that um, and just I don't know I don't really know there's just things that have been very very troublesome with the Kickstarter world like um, just like I said long long delays very little communication frauds um, just that type of stuff just really irks me quite a bit, and I just, I don't know, it's made me very wary to back stuff now. I'm, I'm more, uh, I guess, this, the, I guess I already mentioned this, um, just basically, the bigger campaigns, I have such, you have a much bigger expectation out of them, and when they either can't deliver on time, or they just don't deliver at all, especially, that's one thing that's really gotta be, you know, scary. Uh, especially when you throw a lot of money at, at your screen. Because um, for me, like originally I started, you know, whenever I backed something, it was very cheap, like, like 10, 15, 20 bucks. Like it's, it was fine. Like I didn't really spend a lot of money into it. This comes into my rule that I mentioned very early on in the video that I never really got to. This is basically what I started off with was, you know, the whole, the whole like heart and soul of Kickstarter is, I think this is a cool idea. I want to, here, make it happen. Here's some money, make it happen. I don't even care. And then later on, it started to become more of, I would say, like a business model of sorts. So it's just like you're buying into it, which Pebble really made me realize this a lot more with their Pebble Time campaign. It's just, it seemed a lot more like a pre-order store type thing. And that's one of the things that has caused me to, to change what and how I back things. Um, I have gone, started to go more towards like a higher tier than I usually do. Like usually I'll either be like a very like beginner tier, like especially for comics and stuff like that, like a $5 PDF file of this comic. I'm like, sure, whatever, I can read it on my iPad. Um, because shipping costs usually for comics, is like books in general, they're heavy shit. Their, their shipping is ridiculous here. And especially with the exchange rate that's happening, I've been backing a lot less now. Um, especially because like I said, a lot of stuff's in the States. But... Backing smaller things too, like if you've seen a lot of those art campaigns that have come up, like I think they're really neat. And like, it's, they're only like a buck.
for a lot of the stuff, like one to ten bucks probably at the most, if anything. And I like I like artwork, especially if it's you know really neat looking um, and they're actually good. Um, then basically, yeah, I'll definitely throw money because it's cheap, and I know that for the most part, like how do you how do you screw that up? I've already gotten like um, the the one campaign that really blew it up was the one dollar one drawing. Uh, campaign that I got it was pretty pretty on time too. I thought it w I would be waiting a lot longer But it they got he kept pumping them out. So I got some really nice artwork from that It only cost me like five bucks or something for like five pieces of art and then I was like damn that's fantastic um, So those campaigns I'm like, how do you fuck that up? Here's some money. I know you're probably gonna make, be able to make it happen if you can't What is wrong with you? So uh, the other side of things too like especially like I said um, Bigger campaigns can't expect them to really I have too much of a high expectations for it so at the same time too, um, I guess, I guess uh, I'll get I'll get this out of the way. Um, my rule now is I've been treating Kickstarter more so like a store, I guess, than or like a pre-order store type thing than it is an idea thing. Which I've I I kind of I I feel bad um, because basically my rule of thumb is either I back it because. Um, one, this should be the number one thing is because I think it looks cool and I really want it to make it happen. So there's been, been a lot of stuff that I've backed that has, uh, um, or I guess I haven't backed that because of my second rule is generally if I can, if or I guess these two kind of go a little bit hand in hand, is generally I will back it if it's a better deal for me now than, than it will be in the future. Um, and then go hand in hand with that would be if I know that I will not be able to find this really anywhere else So if it is like a Kickstarter exclusive thing or like especially comics for the most part I'll back them because I know I won't be able to find them in like really any other channel besides this um, Or like at least at a cheaper price So those kind of go hand in hand like if I can get a good deal now I don't mind spending the money now to wait for it later um, But at the same time too if I know if I can't get it here then then um, you know or at least if I can't get it later on somewhere else, then I won't, I'm not going to bother. So that's one thing that really, I backed Pebble Time, I backed out because it ended up costing me, at least in my estimates, about 50-ish bucks more than if I waited for retail after everything considered. I was like, you know what, I can wait. I don't really care about the engraving and stuff like that or getting it early. I can wait for it. I don't really care. Um, I don't even know if I really need one by any means. Uh, so I was like, you know what, I'll wait it out. I'll see what happens, see if I, I'll give it some time to really think about it. Um, so that's the thing there. The other thing too, I guess, is I've been backing more on like a higher tiers generally. So like fewer campaigns, but higher higher tier levels generally. So one thing I really like to, to generally back in, especially in comics or games, um, is uh, getting myself in some things. Because, you know, that's pretty neato. Um, and just one of the biggest campaigns I backed, I'm not going to say which one or how much I spent because I don't want to worry people around that know um is uh just getting myself in a game because you know i like video games and i i I'll, you know that's always really cool to be like i'm playing a game and I'm like holy fuck that's me that's super cool um so yeah that's that's one of the things like it's just there's really unique things that you can't get anywhere else that's the other thing too i'll back something usually it would be a higher tier is if i can you know get something that's very exclusive and that's very like um i guess personal I guess more or less. Um, so that's that's another neat thing too, and um, I don't know, I don't know. I can't really think of much else. The I guess one thing that is, uh, if they bring back Firefly or something like that through an, through a campaign, totally on board with that. Um, but a lot of stuff that's been coming back as well. Like I'll I'll see like a uh, Con Man came out from Nathan Fillion, Alan Tudyk, and Super Troopers two is still ongoing too. And I such a dumb stupid movie, but like a sequel for that, I was like sure why not? I threw money at that as well. So, I don't know, really to, to just kind of more or less end this because it's getting, it's almost fucking 20 minutes long, this video, fuck. Um, I wanted to make this short, but it never happened. So this is a very long video. It's, uh, I may end up just doing an, another part or splitting this up. Nah, I'm probably not going to split it up. You're going to make, I'm going to make you watch this whole entire 20 minute video because, because reasons why. Or I'm just going to upload it and nobody's going to watch it and then I, uh, whatever. So, anyways, just to end this off because I get, uh, my brain's kind of going all over the place. I don't even know if this video made any sense. Um, it's just... Be, be very wary about backing things like I'm very I'm very wary now about what I back like now I've been backing things that are just like small fry like here's a dollar for a piece of artwork or like you know I haven't even been backing many comics because a lot of them have been, been getting super delayed on my end as well so it's just like I don't know if I can wait now like it's a really bad policy I find just because it's just 
you know, my rule of thumb is get a great deal if you can't get it anywhere else or if you're getting something super awesome. But really, it should be the number one thing is just here's an idea. Make it happen. And it's just things have gone really all over the place since, uh, like I said, since more or less it's blown up. So, you know what? Do whatever you want. I'm going to probably take a nap and uh, I don't know. I, I don't even know. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to end the video because I, 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 my brain's just shutting off now. So, I don't know if this made any sense or if it really got a point across. But I guess to summarize more or less is just crowdfunding. What's up, man? Go back to your roots. Bring me, bring me something coolio and just, just I'll throw money at you. Um, just make it happen. Just maybe on time if possible. <laughs> so that's about it. Um, I guess one thing I'll plug quickly before I end this off is um, basically there's a video I'm gonna be doing an unboxing slash uh, review, I guess, of uh, a certain Kickstarter campaign. It's one of the top ten. Um, Kickstarter campaign, so you can probably narrow it out from there. It's a technology kind of thing, so I've narrowed it down even further. But, um, yeah, so expect that. It's going to be probably filled with, I wouldn't say it's a bad review by any means. It probably might be. Um, but uh, we'll, you'll just have to wait and see. It could be really good. You, you never know. But, um, yeah, so that's about it from, from this little ranting rambling. It's been one of the longer videos I've done. So, uh, yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed, or I don't even know if you made it to the end of here. If you did, thanks um, for sticking it through and uh, caring about whatever the words I'm coming out of my mouth. So, um, yeah, I think that's about it. I might do another one that's a little better, but uh, I'm going to upload this anyways because whatever. Fuck it. I need more just stuff. I'll put random stuff on my channel. you probably figure out. The Midnight Adventures are fucking weird. And, yeah, you know what? My channel's weird. If you enjoy weird, subscribe. Subscribbles. I'm done. Peace out, guys. Have an awesome day. Ah.